Welcome back, everybody, to the CSG Podcast, and today I have myself a special guest, another special guest, and I could not be more excited here. I got the Drew Gamer, the, the, not not just any, any Drew, <laughs> not just any Drew Gamer, I got the Drew Gamer. It's it's literally in his profile title, like, yeah. <laughs> he is the <laughs> Drew Gamer. How are you doing, man? How's it I'm going? I'm doing all right. It's been, yeah. been a tiring weekend, but it's it's fine. Yeah, doing a lot of artwork or other things? Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of editing, a lot of drawing, um, just housework, helping mm-hmm. mom around the house and stuff. So, Oh, don't I know that. I know those struggles help mom around the house. Like, RJ, pack out the garbage. I don't want to, mom. Like, who pays the rent around here? Okay, I'll get the garbage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I know those struggles. Yeah, you just, just, unless you're paying any bit of that rent, you have no point. You cannot argue yeah. <laughs> to do anything in the house. <laughs> um, so, anyways, yeah. So, as you guys might be able to, to see from his background, um, the Drew Gamer is quite a fan of Pokemon. I and am indeed. So, at, to kind of um, cater to that, so 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 to speak, um, this episode is going to be more focused on Pokemon. Um, kind of a Pokemon themed, kind of also like a kind of getting to know Drew a bit better. So kind of mixing the two together, I thought that'd be a really fun way to do this podcast episode. So no no heavy stuff about talking about GameStop like we put out today. No heavy stuff with that. No heavy stuff with Blizzard. What's going on with Blizzard getting indicted and getting <laughs> shut down by our government. No heavy stuff. It's going to be fun of Pokemon, all right? So, but before we get to the real nitty-gritty Pokemon stuff, I did let Drew know ahead of time. So, every like every episode, we talk about what we're playing, whether that's on our channel, personally, we just talk about what we're playing. And, I mean, I know you put out some stuff regularly on your channel. You got the Zelda yeah. playthrough going on for a time. Is that all you're playing? Or are you playing other stuff when you when you got a moment to yourself? Uh, well, Ocarina of Time is... I, I recorded it all last year, so I'm not actually oh. recording anything. Oh, working ahead uh, of time, as they say. All right. Yeah, it's because I, I, uh, around this time last year, I took a break from YouTube and streaming. And I had, at the time, I had Chrono Trigger, Pokemon, uh, Monotype Steel Run, and ocarina of time going up and then all some stuff happened and i was just like okay well i'm gonna take a break and i still haven't officially got back into streaming yet so uh i'm coming hopefully coming back to that soon but um nothing at the moment that is going up on my channel is recent Mm. um but outside of that i've been playing kana bridge of spirits oh yeah yeah um which is phenomenal i'm like loving it um tales of arise which is also oh, really good yeah the new tales game yeah mm-hmm. and i've been playing nexamon off and on uh which is like kind of like again like pokemon just a monster training capture game um originally came out on mobile and then they've just released the original on console so i've been playing through that because i never really played it yeah and okay. I think that's it <laughs> i mean well you, you can't play too many games at one time <laughs> no <laughs> um you know i'm you know it's interesting so when, when, for the ocarina of time when you so you said you did it all last year did you so you recorded it you actually intended to record it and you did that all last year yeah even though you weren't like actively trying to do anything with youtube you still recorded that footage yeah yeah okay interesting um, um well i think i mean, I re- I'm, a, I'm yeah go ahead uh, I think I finished recording before I went on break. Oh, okay. But when, but then you went break and you're like, ah, it's not even. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. So did you end up just like, so has it just been on your profile? Just, just there privately? Just ready? No, to, no. It's, to um, I've, I've got them all edited and then I upload them. I upload the three episodes on Sunday for the week and I just schedule them. Ah, okay. So you keep them like on a hard drive somewhere or your computer yeah. and then you, okay, interesting. Cause, um, cause since YouTube allows you to just hold on to, you know, your inventory as much as you want, I'm a, um, I've always been someone who records ahead of time as well. Um, and it kind of, um, I know some people just don't have the time, but yeah. for some people that do, you know, I don't know why you don't, if you have the time record in bulk. Yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't, it saves you so much more time in the future. Yeah. You have to edit it all at one time. But I mean, 
it saves you so much time. And like, just dedicate one Sunday, dedicate a Sunday or Saturday or a day off or whatever. Record for half the day, or no, sorry, edit for half the day or whatever. Bam, done <laughs> for like a good few days. Yeah, um, yeah. And then I just upload them all to YouTube. And then once they're once I'm ready to schedule, put it out, bam, just right pick. Yeah. So it's good to see some people other because I see some people who who were like struggling what to do. Like it's it's a daily grind, you know. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. Just like just recorded in bulk. <laughs> just recorded of, um, in bulk, my. A lot of it came down to yeah. um, I'd visit California a lot, and oh. um, I would while I was out there I wouldn't be recording, so I'd record a lot of it while I was back here, mm-hmm. and then I'd go out mm-hmm. to California and upload it while I was in California. Yeah, yeah. Um, also help. Yeah, it helps you when you go on trips too. Because I, I once had a record. Um, I was going on going to Florida for yeah. a trip. And I, I was like, crap, I need to make sure I have content to schedule every day. And so I did. So I recorded ahead of time in bulk and then, bam, had, had the material ready to go while I was gone. Um, you know, next time you're in California, take a little trip two states up and you'll <laughs> find me um, in Washington. <laughs> and maybe you can come say hi. We can play some Pokemon or something. Yeah. Um, I can show you my shiny Charizard that I still have. That I still have. Oh, from, um, from like the long- card, that is. Oh, the card. card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the car. I can show you my the car, but better not steal it from me. I'll kill you. <laughs> um, <laughs> that car's gonna give me. That car's gonna like. I predict that car one is gonna give me a, like gonna make me pay a mortgage. <laughs> gonna put me put on a, a a down payment on a house. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so it's really cool. Um, to hear what you're playing. Um, how was that Tales game? I heard it's like one of the better ones in a long time. I, I yeah, I would agree. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not super far into it. My only like the only gripe I have with it is it, it's like a really really minuscule thing, is that there's only six characters, and it, it's okay. more of an OCD thing. Is that there's only six characters, but you have four of them on your team, so then you've just got two in reserve, and it feels really weird, just like having just two on the side. Hmm. And I feel like oh, we could have added two more, or just left it as four characters, and it would have been cooler. But it just it's just like a really like it's a minor thing. I like having a lot of characters, because I do, I am a game designer. Oh, okay. Um, and I do a lot of, I do the, like, the documentation side of it. I don't, like, do the game development side of it. Okay. So I do all, like, the design documents, the mechanics, the world building, sort of, like, the narratology side of it, and all the, the like, design side, what, everything that goes into the game I write. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do a lot of character writing and a lot of character development and I like having a good amount of characters that but enough for it to not be overwhelming so that everyone gets a good amount of development within each yeah. like scenario and stuff. So that's what this game's do- doing. I just like I, it's just like a really <laughs> OCD thing that it's like um there just isn't an, two extra characters. Yeah, I, mean, I want to. It's interesting you're a game designer. I'm, I'm not, but um, I, I imagine on one hand it's really awesome, you know, being a game designer. On the other hand, it's probably infuriating because you play so many games where you're just like, "That's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong." Why are they doing that? You're just, it's just like driving you crazy. I mean, yeah. it could drive it could drive someone crazy who doesn't have designing experience. Like you know, like I I could see a game development and still be like, "This is bad," but you actually do it so for, <laughs> for a living. Yeah. So like, it, it's probably like three times as more annoying and more infuriating because you're just like, oh my gosh, like you just probably just want to just like, just let me, let me, let me do this again. Let me, let me redo this. Yeah. I will make yeah. it better. <laughs> oh, I've spoken man. to my friend Dan about it. I've spoken to other people about it as well, but mm-hmm. we'll, we'll obviously get into Pokemon later. Oh and yeah. And one of the questions that you asked, and I've got some points on that for oh, one sure. of the questions that you asked. I'm so sure. not yeah. Oh geez, I, I I wish I had known you were a design before I asked you those questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, lastly, yeah, Canaan Bridge of Spirits. I don't I don't have it yet. I will get it eventually because I am a sucker for platformers. And I know this yeah. isn't just a platformer; it's like an action platformer. But I am a sucker for those like collectibles. I'm a sucker yeah. for those. That's what I. It's grew really up on. interesting. It's what I love. Um, and so I have heard though because I'm also a trophy hunter, and I've heard that. When you beat the game, you look like the higher difficulty. And I've heard that difficulty is actually pretty bonkers. So I'm not looking forward to that <laughs> when no. that time well, comes. Well, I've already been – I got to a boss yesterday, and it took me 12 attempts to do it because oh, it's just 
it was a really hard boss. It's a really good oh, game. No. It's superb. It's absolutely uh-huh. visually stunning. I absolutely love it. Oh jeez, I'm not looking forward to that. Twelve, twelve attempts on the boss. <laughs> like I'm just like, if I want that, I'll play Dark Souls. <laughs> See, yeah, I don't want. I don't want to play this. And, oh, you guys. Well, I'll still grab it one day. But um, yeah, it's good to hear. Um, now I for the people who watched the last couple episodes, I've told people that I've been playing God of War 2018. And oh yeah, yeah. The re- the reboot, and um, I'm still playing it because uh, uh, that too. game. I forgot that was another one. I forgot to add. Yeah, that game is so much longer than it has any right to be but i don't care yeah exactly (laughs) i don't care um quick question though um atreus how old is he supposed to be in this game is it 12 13 i I, thought he was 10 but i'm i think it's about i think he's supposed to be around like preteens preteen almost teenager okay yeah I was thinking he was ten, right? Because everything else made up made sense so far up until yeah. up until um. Wait, how far? Wait, how how far are you? Let me ask you that. Um, you? that's a good question because I haven't played it for a while. Um, I am on you... my way to one of the other worlds. Uh, uh, yeah, have you fought the elves yet? Yes. Okay, so you passed that. Did you fight Thor's kids? No. Okay. Um. Well, let me just say this without saying too much. So, um, Atreus, he's like, you know, he's just kind of whimsical most of the game. Yeah. As far as what you played so far. And he's just like, you know, wonder, amazement, just like, why? Like, like any 12 year old would. Stuff happens later, and he becomes an actual teenager <laughs> where he's like hella moody, <laughs> just, just defiant as hell. <laughs> Just a whole, he turns into just, it's like, but the shift is so fast, right? Yeah. And so he just turns, he's just like, whatever, I don't care. Like, I thought you said you didn't like my tone of voice, dad or father. Like, it's just, yeah. he's just totally, total I, fucking brat. <laughs> I've seen a couple, like, when when you do the elf bit, I, I saw uh-huh. some of it. He, it's not, okay, he has like an outburst with, with Kratos around that during that yeah, yeah. yeah but but that was more of like I know what you're talking about but that and to me that seemed more like frustration yeah just definitely more like, frustration you know, Kratos just is cryptic he doesn't give straight answers a lot of the time it's just frustrating right but no we're, I'm talking straight up straight up brat <laughs> straight up 12 year old <laughs> brat all right and I it was almost off-putting for me it was yeah. I mean I, I got it but I but I'm still thinking he's 10 right so I'm thinking like wait how much time has passed in this journey? Like, right? <laughs> so I was like, a 10 year old wouldn't act like this. So yeah. I'm like, he has to be older than 10. So then I'm thinking like, have we been gone for years <laughs> on his <laughs> journey? He's, that's like three years passed and he's a teenager now. <laughs> like what is going on? Um, um, but I'm like, no, he has to be like 12 then. He has to be 12 or 13. He has to, because uh, it makes no sense. But yeah, he just, 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 it'll come. It'll come. He's going to yeah. be a total brat for a while. And honestly, for me, I was like, fuck, like, it's just so, I, I guess you could say is to, is, it's, it's just, it's, it's saying something that they were able to get under my skin with his, with his voice acting. Yeah. I don't even have kids. I'm not gonna have a 12 year old anytime soon. Yeah. And I was still like, no, <laughs> <laughs> like this, this, this inner paternal instinct that I didn't even know I had <laughs> just like coming out. I'm like, I'm going to choke you. <laughs> I'm going to literally choke you. And um, there's like a long stretch where like, just where everything you do, which is like super smart, like, cause you have to go back to places that you've already been. Yeah. yeah. While Kred- while Atreus is a fucking dick. Right. And so, but like you could go one way, you can go another way. And when you go the other way, Atreus will actually say shit about it. <laughs> Which is like, which is hella smart coding, yeah. But also increasingly infuriating because like, I went, I got to one open area where they already been. He remembered it, and then I went another way, which I actually, thought, I mean, I didn't have to go. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. He was like, you know, you there's you know, you know there's nothing over there, right? And I'm like, kid, <laughs> one more, one more, <laughs> Ooh, one more, kid, one more. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear, I oh, 
<laughs> do you not look at look at me? I can I can I can I can kick you and you <laughs> would just fly. <laughs> oh man. Just wait. Just you wait. Um so yeah, I'm playing God of War. It's amazing still, it's great. Um I'm getting towards the last act. I'm um I'm like taking care of all the collectibles, all the other little miscellaneous things. Yeah. I'm wrapping up a lot of stuff. Um but yeah, I I don't know if I'll be done by next week or by the next time I do a recording with David or whoever, but it's I'm having a great time. And I'm also playing this weird racing game. Ducati 90th anniversary is like a motorbike game. Yeah, uh, game. Um, it's hella repetitive. It's um hella indie, but <laughs> I played anyways. So, <laughs> oh well. Anyways, that's my shit. Um, we'll move on. <laughs> um, so we're gonna talk. So we're we're gonna bring it back to Pokemon now. Now from here on out, Pokemon themed. Um, so as we do every episode, we ask like a little fun question, a little small little. I guess you call it icebreaker, but I feel we've already broken that ice. But yeah. um, <laughs> like a little fun little question to kind of get the gears rolling. And so today's question, I believe, let me refer to my notes again. Uh, yes, there it is. All right. And I feel the Drew, Gamer, the, the Drew Gamer here is the perfect person to ask this. So there's eight Pokemon generations right now. Yes. So far. Out of all those eight, which one is your least favorite? Least favorite. Ooh. Yeah, see, yeah, tricked you with the least favorite. Least favorite's fa- too easy. Yeah, Which but I, even favorite's really hard for me because I like a lot of... The, the thing with Pokemon is that because they're... There's something about every generation that I really like. Yeah, it's, um, that's true. I would say... Maybe... Um, Gen 6? Okay. And that's just, a, a, that. a, a, that's just a push. Because mm-hmm. I really like Kalos. Kalos is a beautiful region. The fact that it's based on France is just fantastic. And it involves a lot of Norse mythology. And oh, I'm, does it? Yeah, like everything about okay. Kalos is... Like the, the legend... I don't know if you've played X and Y. Um, no. The, like, do you know the legendaries from it, though? Not all of them. But Zygarde... I remember the main two. Yeah, yeah. Yvetel and um, yeah, the the the, the deer. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, they are based on different things from around the world tree. Oh, you know what? The deer makes more sense. Uh, is, is, is Zenius? Zernius, yeah. It? Zernius, yeah. Because um, in God of War, there's actually like a little thing you could do with Atreus, and he activates a deer. Yeah. And it looks kind of like the antlers kind of look like a Xerneas. Yeah. 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 Okay. When you find okay. I didn't know that. Xerneas in the game, it's a tree. Ah, and the, the antlers okay. are supposed to be the branches, but it's supposed to be, uh-huh. there's like nine, I think it's nine deer that roam around the base of Yggdrasil. Hmm. And that's based on that. Eveltal is based on, um, I've forgotten the name of it. It's a, it's like a bird that lives in the branches of Yggdrasil. And then Zygarde okay. is the is the serpent that eats the roots of Yggdrasil. But then oh. Zygarde has different forms as well. It has like a Fenrir form yeah. and a Jormungandr form. Yeah, I know that's like a they, they call it like a certain complete, like thirty three percent complete yeah, yeah. Zygarde and like fifty percent Zygarde or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I do like know. A, I remember those. There's like a three D. I really wanted it at the time, but I couldn't afford it. A three DS with uh, it was like gold and it was all like Nordic art on it. Oh, I think I remember seeing that one. I think I remember seeing that. Because I worked at GameStop around that time. Yeah. And so I remember seeing that. Um, yeah. Pokemon always brought it with those uh, special edition consoles. Yeah, they did. Oh, man. They always brought it with those special edition consoles. I actually have one myself. Oh, nice. I have um, I have the, uh, the new 2DS with the Pokemon Red and Blue yeah. plates. I have that one. Because I didn't like, I didn't really care about the 3DS. But I didn't like the XL, which is what they were pushing yeah. so hard for a long time. I thought the XL was a little too big. So when they realized the 2DS, I was like, oh, hell yeah. And then they were like, here's a special edition Pokemon red and blue one. I was like, double hell yeah. And then they were like, it's only $200. I was like, triple hell yeah. But then they were like, we're only giving like, there's only like five of them in existence. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I had to like, I, cause I was like debating if I could afford it or not because I was super poor working in co- at college at the time. Yeah. And then I was like debating like, should I do it? Should I not do it? And then I decided like to finally just like, okay, I'll just do it. But my store didn't have one. I was calling around every location that in my state, not, not just in my area, my entire state that still had a copy or two. Yeah. I called one that was like 40 miles up from me. And then it was like, well, we still have it. It's not on reserve. 
or we're not going to put it on reserve because this is like a hot item. Yeah. So they were like, if you come here and no one wants it, you can have it. So I was like, bet. So the next day, because I called like late at night, the next day I dro- I woke up super early, drove, because I know GameStop's open at 10. Yeah. I drove all the way up like 50, 45, 50 miles all the way up there. And I got there right when they opened, maybe 10 minutes after they opened, it was still there. I saw it right. I was like, you give me that shit right now. <laughs> and then as I'm ringing it up, as I'm ringing it up, some dude called asking for it, like trying to like get it. And yeah. he was like, I just sold it. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I still have it. I still have it. That's um, awesome. But um, so Gen 6, you know, I mean, you have very, you have more in depth reasons why. But I feel most people probably would say six, five or six. Yeah, a I lot of people say five. Are probably the the two hated ones. I really now, five. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I really like Gen Five. I love the fact that it's a complete reboot. It's got all these new Pokemon. I'm all for adding new Pokemon stuff. I don't like Unova. Mm-hmm. I just there's just something about Unova that I just don't like. Like as, as a, a region? region, yeah. But my issue with Gen yeah. Six is that. Um, there's not enough new Pokemon. It focused too much on Kanto. Like, there are more Kanto Pokemon in the game than there are Kalos Pokemon. Or okay. uh, you catch... Um, depending on your starter, you get uh, Articuno, Zapdos, or Moltres. Oh, okay. And yeah, you go yeah. to... In, in order to get them, you go to a, 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 a cave called like the Sea Dragon's Den or something. Okay. And you follow them around the region, and eventually they go to there, and you go into there and you catch them, which feels like, oh, well, they, there was a legendary that was supposed to be there, but they took it out. Hmm. Interesting. Um, there's no trio in the game. Like, new legendary oh, trio. there isn't a trio in that one. Mm-mm. I never thought about it, but yeah, you're right, there isn't one. And then, I'm not a huge fan of Mega Revolution. I like some of the designs and stuff, but um, it was, again, mostly Kanto that got new forms they didn't give megas to the the three new cow starters for instance mm-hmm. so it was true. just a lot i don't i understand why they did it because they're like okay we're putting it 3d we've got to remodel all these pokemon but it, it was too much kanto love for me i'm not i love kanto i started with kanto but i don't want to play hmm. a new generation and be reminded of kanto constantly i want to learn and be in depth with the new region and all the I- new pokemon I guess it's safe to say you're not a Gen Oneer, um, no. <laughs> with that, which is a totally fine. Um, I because actually speaking of them, I mean honestly, I feel when when Gen five from what I saw, because I full disclosure, I haven't played past Gen four, but um, yeah, I have all of them though. I have all the handheld games. I actually own all of them, but I have yeah. not played them past Gen four. But um, anyways, but I remember Gen five really got a lot of hate mainly i imagine from gen oneers because they yes. saw like you know the ice cream and the and garbador and they were like what in the fuck is going on with my pokemon that even though i haven't played since gen one i'm gonna act like it's mine and then they're like yeah pokemon is down the drain pokemon like make pokemon great again <laughs> yeah like, that's losing like, their the- minds. and honestly i was a little I didn't really care as much as them, but I also like a little like, huh, this is kind of strange. I mean, Pokemon's always been kind of weird with some of their Pokemon. It's, I mean, you can pull any kind of example. I mean, Geodude is literally a rock with arms. Come on. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, they've always had weird Pokemon, but I did kind of... Garbodor didn't bother me because Grimer, Muck, come on. Yeah. But yeah. um, I did get a little bothered by Vanillix, and I did get yeah. a little bothered by... um. I don't know how to say his name right, but the the key, Clefy, Clef King. Oh, Clef Key. Clef well, Key. I, okay, yes. Those two bothered uh, me. They did bother me actually, but everyone else was fine. I can tell you about Clef Key. Oh, oh, we got some scoop. It, Ooh, we got the scoop. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a huge. Uh, I, I oh. can't say it. <laughs> I can't use the word, but say it's it. a word that rhymes with lore. With you want lore? me to say it? With lore. Like yeah. L O R E. It's a word that yeah. rhymes with lore. But it begins with W H. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I definitely want to know the scoop now. <laughs> um, it's based on a fairy 
It's literally just based on a fairy uh, that goes around oh. collecting keys. Oh. So it really? does actually have a reason why it is designed that way, yeah. Why can't it be a fairy? That... I would have just uh, taken a fairy, to make it... it is a fairy. It's I mean, a fairy that's on. supposed to look like a, a set of keys. It's a fairy type. I get it. All right, cool. Oh, no, no. Gen 5, they didn't have fairies yet, did they? No. No, so it was Gen 6. Did they, did, did they make a fairy later on? No, it came in in Gen 6. But, like, well, I know some people got their types changed. So, yeah. did it... Is it a fairy? Fairy type? Yeah, it's still fairy. Still fairy. Okay, cool. So, I know it's a... Okay, cool. It's a, It's technically a fairy. But, like, why didn't it just make it a fairy? Like, a fairy-looking thing. Like, that'd be Because cool. it's supposed to be a fairy that looks like keys. <sighs> but, come on, man. It's just... <sighs> That's what... It's, it's actually really clever. I mean, the background is clever. I still can't get over the design. I just, I just can't. No, I don't like the, I don't like Klefki. I'm not like a huge fan of Klefki, but yeah. I get why it's designed that way. I mean, okay, your your logic is sound, Pokemon, but it still looks crap. <laughs> so I'm sorry, <laughs> it just looks crap. And I, I mean, I don't care what your logic is between Vanillix, but bro, it's just literally like I know Deli Bird was literally Santa Bird. But at yeah. least that thing looks kind of cool, all right? Yeah. <laughs> it also looks hella derpy, and you can laugh at it and make fun of it. Vanillix just looks like, come, like, ah. Like, like I'm going to open my fridge, and I'm like, oh, Vanillix, there you are. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the problem. Like, the one thing with Vanillix is is, is that, that it's, it's, it's very powerful. That's which even I worse. Think they did that's even purpose. worse. Yeah. That's even worse. You're going to make me carry on this ice cream cone that's actually OP? Get yeah. out of here. <laughs> No, I gotta look it's at this got OP like, ice cream. Cone. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I know it's got at least 110 special attack. 110? Yeah, at <sighs> least. Um, you know what? Before I get upset, we just need a, no more Vanillix. I'm gonna get upset. <laughs> no more Vanillix. Um, so okay, so Gen Six for you. Um, I like I said, I haven't played out of the out of the four I've played so far. I would probably say four so far has been my least favorite um and i say that just because of the fact out of um a gameplay standpoint it is slow as crap yeah um it was not optimized well for the hard it wasn't and it, you move like molasses even when you're running <laughs> even when you're doing the bike you move like you're going right through syrup and it sucks um yeah which makes traveling a lot more of a chore i don't like it I don't mind the gameplay. The gameplay is fine. Legendaries are fine. I don't like the story. Um, I don't like Team... Um, who are they? Galactic. Galactic. I don't like them. Um, I like when they get roasted by uh, the professor. That's Which fun. one did you play? But, did you play um, Diamond and Pearl or Platinum? All three. I have all three. Oh, you played Platinum? And so I have played all of them. I know Platinum was a little bit better. Um, yeah. They flashed out the story a bit. The gameplay was a little bit better. Um, but... As a whole, still, and I did like how they added the extra person, their extra general guy. That was cool. Yeah, was is it Saturn? Is that that's is that the new one? Or is it? Uh, no, the new else? one. It was a scientist. Scientist. Okay. Um, Ch uh, I can't remember what it's called. Well, anyways, they, I know I liked. I do always appreciate when they add extra things, but it's yeah. still at the score of the same game. And I just like I can see like that leader, the galactic leader. I don't remember his name anymore. But, Cyrus. Um, Cyrus. I get like he's trying to he has like a some kind of like goal that he thinks is bigger than himself and like he thinks he's like helping the world in some twisted way. And in a way I could see like, huh, maybe he's got a point. But like on a whole, it just seems kind of contrived to me. And oh, and the first worst thing I hate about it, I hate Barry with all of my life. <laughs> and I think you guys might have mentioned that in your um tier thing, maybe. I don't remember, but Barry is the worst ever. <laughs> the worst now you don't have to have a rival that has to be a dick yeah you don't have to okay what i get it but it's like don't go the exact opposite and just make him the most annoying character you've ever i mean i can imagine okay i'm playing this as like a, as like a, a 20 year old an adult yeah so of course i'm gonna be annoyed by it but i can honestly see myself in 2010 being just so annoyed by this guy especially if i had played three the gen three moved right to gen four and i'm just like why is he why is he running into everything? Why is he betting me a million bazillion dollars yeah. to try to get to the next place? Why is he always yelling? Why 
why he's always running so fast? Why does his haircut suck? Why does his yeah. Pokemon suck? Why does he look so dumb? Why doesn't he reconcile with his dad? Like, ah! <laughs> like I just hate this guy so much. I hate Barry. I hate Barry, and especially when you, when you, when, when who, when who should be your rival is just the professor's assistant. Makes it all the more infuriating because you're yeah. like, I want, I want to battle you, Don. I want to fight you. Um, what's the guy's name? Lucas. Lucas, I want to fight you, Lucas. I don't want to fight goddamn Barry. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here, Barry, you piece of shit. Um, yeah, I don't like Barry. So that's why I would say out of the ones I played, Gen 4 is the one I don't like the most. Yeah. But um, out of all of them, I would probably – I don't think I'm going to like five out of them all because of the fact – because my brother, he's played all of them, I believe. Yeah. At least up to, at least up to six, Gen 6. And he just told me like – um, he did say, you know, the whole Pokedex is brand new. All of them are, you know, Pokemon, which is cool. I don't mind that. But he said some of them, their evolution stages take forever. To yes, they to. do. And I'm not down with that, especially when it's only one evolution. I, yes. don't want, I don't want a basic Pokemon with like 50 attack stat. And I have to use this thing up until level 55, like a Dragon I... Knight, to evolve once. Like, that, why did they do that? I, Why did they do that? Um, because I, I I didn't like Unpheasant that much, mm-hmm. which is like the regional bird. So I real and I've been waiting for an eagle for a really long time. So I wanted to use Rufflet and Braviary, and I had a Rufflet still in the Pokemon League because it evolves at level fifty or fifty five. <sighs> it's like you're you're you're. And then, by the time you get to the Pokemon League, you're fighting with like baby Pokemon. Because they're not evolved yet. Because they made it to, like you have yeah. to. Oh, once you get to level eighty three, then it evolves. And it's like eighty three. I'm not even. Go- I'm done with the game before I get to level eighty three. Like yeah. <laughs> the heck. The worst. The worst one is Dino. Dino. I don't know Dino. Which, which Dino is the pseudo legendary of Gen five. Okay. And evol- it's it. You get it in Victory Road. Okay. It evolves at level fifty, mm-hmm. and then at sixty four. 60 gosh damn it and isn't um gosh is is talon flame gen 5 or 6 6 6 doesn't he have a, a high one too no no there was another one my brother told me about talon flame that was like 50 a lot of there's, there's just there's too many 50s and there's only one stage like that's a that's a, yeah, that's yeah. a second stage level you know that's a second stage yes, number. Is, that yeah. is not a first stage and only stage evolution stage. that's why i don't like unova because for the because the uh, pokemon games are always linear in a way yeah but yeah, they always yeah. give you that option to go off and you can explore different areas unova is very much a straight path okay it's, and okay. you get to a certain point and it and then all of a sudden you veer off to the pokemon league but the rest of the region you don't get to explore until post game interesting so they made it way more linear so, yeah okay but it's very story driven. There's a X and Y. X and Y. Black and White does have a really good story. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just that it that it, it's just very linear, and and like, but most of them are in a way. But mm-hmm. they usually have like, oh, I'm gonna go off and do this, or I'm gonna go off and do that. Yeah, it's always like even even when the game makes it seem like you have to go do this right away, you don't have to, which is kind of no. so funny with God of War. It's the exact same way. Like something huge yeah. will happen. And it's like, we have to go do this to go, you know, do the big thing. And it's like, but the game just lets let you do what you want. And so I'm like, well, okay, I'm going to go over here first. I know the world <laughs> needs me, but I'm going to go over here yeah, first. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, now when it comes to linearity, I don't mind it too much. I'm not a huge stickler for it. I just, I'm going to hate having to hold on to these puny, crappy Pokemon for so you long. Might. I know you, you like complete the Pokedex as well. I do like um, to complete the Pokedex, yes. If but I you can. might find that your in-game team is nothing like that. It's only the later Pokemon in the region that are like that. Oh, well, okay. We'll have to see. Oh, um, yeah. But, uh, all right, cool. So, six for you, five for me. Anyways, we're going to get on to some main things. Basically, there's not, not going to be one big discussion this episode. I'm going to just ask Drew some more Pokemon-related questions, get his thoughts on some things. Um, and that's kind of, that, That'll just take us to the rest of this episode here. So, let me, ask, let me get to the first question here. I try to think of stuff that wasn't going to be just, you know, generic, usual questions, you know, like questions that, you, that yeah. hopefully you might not have been asked before. But, um, all right, so as a long time, maybe even lifelong Pokemon person like yourself, so what is it about Pokemon, in your opinion, that kind of, that kind of, first of all, got you in, if you can remember that far back? 
Yeah, I can and remember how I died to Pokemon. I can't. But um, <laughs> <laughs> well, like you know, the first thing that got you back in, and what what keeps you coming back every generation to keep? Um. Well, firstly, like when I when I first got into Pokemon, I was in primary school, so elementary school. Mm-hmm. Um. I. I didn't know anything about it. Like my friends were just suddenly like, "Oh yeah, I'm a Pikachu," and I was I'm like, "I'm a Pikachu." <laughs> yeah, because you know you like run around as like little uh-huh. and pl- we're playing games, and I was just like, I, I, "I have no idea what that is." And around my birthday that year, um, I, I um. I had a couple of friends over and we turned the TV on. They're like, oh, Pokemon's on. So I sat down and I started watching it. It was the SSN episode. Oh, where it gets. Oh, oh gosh. That, that's it, a that's a touchy one. That's a, ooh, that's yeah. a sad one. Okay. <laughs> and mm. so I was like, oh wow, this is like really trippy. And I started like getting really into like the 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 um the the designs of the Pokemon. I was like, this is real this is a really interesting concept. Uh, well, I didn't say that as as a kid, but <laughs> I hope not. Otherwise, we have to look at um, you <laughs> like what <yeah>. you say. <laughs> and I, my dad bought me Pokemon Red for Christmas uh, that year because I was like, "Oh yeah, Pokemon! It's really cool." I hadn't even seen any other episodes. That was literally the only episode I saw was the SSN episode, and I was All just right. obsessed with Pokemon. <laughs> and he bought it me, and then I I started it, and I started with Bulbasaur. Didn't know what the hell I was doing. Restarted. Played with Charmander, got to Misty, couldn't get past her, restarted with Squirtle, and then Squirtle's just been like my main, like my Kanto starter pretty much ever since, unless I'm doing like all the runs on it. Mm-hmm. I will usually go Squirtle. Um, and I just love the, I'm, I'm a big RPG person. I think, I'm trying to think if I played Farm Monty 7 before I played Pokemon. I don't think I did. I think I had Pokemon before I played Farm Monty 7. Um, but that was pretty much one of my first RPGs, and I love the concept of it. I love the fact that you could get, you could catch them, and you could gather them, you could trade them off, evolve them, and it was just like something completely different to anything I was playing at the time, like you know, like pra- Crash Bandicoot or Spyro or yeah. um, just other random games like Tekken or Mortal Kombat. And I was just, I was, I was just like really into it, and I, I loved talking about it with my friends and. We, you know, trading Pokemon back and forth. Like, oh yeah, I want you to evolve my Machoke into my Champ or my Haunter into a Gengar. So we'd always like sit down and we'd do that. And then we'd start again and then we'd play it through again. It was just like a constant thing. It was like the mm-hmm. big, really big hype of Pokemon, like around that time. Oh yeah. And and then Gen Two came out when I went into high school, and I was. I, I was I loved it. Like Gen Two is like probably my favorite, and I I just loved the, like, the whole advancement of everything from Gen One. It fixed all the issues that Gen One had, and it added more to it. It had breeding. It had it um that sprites because the the sprites in Gen One are very uh, weird. Of its time, let's say, let's, yeah. just, let's just go and say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very of its time because a lot of the a lot of the sprites were developed before the anime yes and yes. then the anime made anime. them how they looked mm-hmm. like what they look like now so then obviously like when Je- when yellow came out it it fixed the front sprites but not the back sprites so then gen 2 fixed those and i was i just absolutely loved gen 2 i loved the the, the lore of johto and and then after a while, like I, I played Gen 2 for a really long time. It was the first one I officially completed the Pokedex on because I'd always get close to finishing it, but no mm-hmm. one ever had the Pokemon that I needed. Yeah. In red. And then I, f- I got to all 251 Pokemon, including Celebi in Gen 2. And then I I didn't play because I didn't have a Game Boy Advance. So I didn't play Ruby and Sapphire when they first came out. I had no idea they existed. I looked at them and I was like, eh, I'm not really that bothered. And then I met Dan mm. in high school and he had Ruby. And I started playing a ROM event. And I was like, okay, this is like really cool. And then I got really got back into Pokemon then. And I I and then I I wasn't a huge fan of Gen 3 at the time because it felt very standalone, whereas like Gen 1, you could trade Pokemon to Gen 2. 
Yeah. And you could trade them back and forth between the two gens, whereas Gen 3 mm-hmm. was very standalone until they brought out Fire Red and Leaf Green. And I loved, I love Hoenn now. I love like the, the Gen 3 games now a lot, especially after Emerald. Um, but if I hadn't met Dan, I probably wouldn't have got back into it because then we became like, oh, well, I'm getting this version. What version are you getting? And then we'd get the opposite version of each other. Yeah. Interesting. So we could say Dan is what 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 brought you back in a way. Yeah. Interesting. That's interesting. I was, yeah. Well, hey, sometimes friends do that, you know. Yeah. Um, I um, interesting to hear the history behind that. I mean, I I can honestly don't have a whole rude story for myself. Um, it just became this is something that just came across me, and I was like, I started playing it, thought it was amazing, watched the show, that was amazing, yeah. put the two together that's amazing too. So I was just <laughs> like, I just got huge into Pokemon, you know, like everybody else, I kind of just got wrapped up in it. I don't remember being introduced to it, like how I did. It just became yeah. something that just came my way. Like a lot of other games do, you know, you just start playing for one way or another. And you're like, this is amazing. I love it. I'm going to keep playing it. The best thing, obviously, you know, the, having it be on a handheld, you can take it wherever you go. So it's always kind yeah. of omnipresent. It's like omnipresent in your life. Cause you can take it wherever you, wherever you want to go. Um, uh, but yeah, I, um, I I uh, played, so it's kind of weird because I don't. I actually never had red or blue. I had yeah. yellow. I had yellow. So I didn't know about red or blue for a while. I yeah. had yellow, and I was always confused. Like, I mean, I was happily confused about like, huh? My special Pikachu edition. I have a Pikachu all the time. Like that's like the show. And then like I got all the starters anyway. So why would I even want red or blue? Because I get all yeah. the starters anyways, and I get to fight Team Rocket all the time. Like on the show, like. I was like, this is better anyways. I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah. I love, I love yellow. I took, and obviously like, you know, the colors change by the city you go to. Like, that was awesome. Like, I had never even played red or blue for a long time. I, just, I had to play yellow. So when I actually went, when I actually played red and blue sometime later, I was like, oh, this is a lot different. Pokemon yeah, it is. Weird. Pokemon look really weird. The colors don't change what where's team rocket like yeah <laughs> you know, well i'm sorry where's jesse and james i should say um yeah but um yeah, a lot of good times with that and then with the second gen i mean it's gen 2 is probably everyone's favorite i mean how can you like i can i wish i could go back and get the feeling again of yeah playing playing silver because i had silver my brother yeah, had, I had, gold, silver I had as well. silver. i wish i had gold because i like mary and i like hondauer but um <clears throat> I wish I could go back and get that feeling again. I mean, you probably would too. When you beat the Elite Four, he takes you back home, and then Professor Oak comes in and is like, "Hey, you can go to the SSN." It's like, or the SS. It was SSN again, wasn't it? Uh, SSN Aqua. again. Also, Aqua. Okay. Wait, that was Gen. That was Gen Two. Okay, what, whatever. Doesn't matter. Go on the boat, big old boat, and then um, see where it takes you. And you're like, okay, because Gen Two for me, when Gen Two came out. I was still like in grade school, maybe yeah. middle school. Like I was no older than preteen, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Let's go do that. Go over there, fight old Pokemon, fighting like old Gen One Pokemon. You're like, yo, what? I haven't seen this Pokemon in so long. You yeah. get off the boat. You get off the boat. Check the map, and you're in Viridian City, and you're up Vermilion City. You're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> you just lost your mind. <laughs> like you're like, I'm back in Kento. <laughs> like what? Of the and you're going through and- everything. And you see, you see the Snorlax, and you're like, yeah. oh my gosh, the Snorlax. <laughs> you're just losing your mind. I wish I could get that feeling back again. That is a timeless feeling. Uh, just the, because back then, like, you just didn't, the games weren't made like that. You know, no. like, oh, here's the, here's the map, beat the game. Oh, here's an entire new map to go on top of that map. And you're like, little kid brain can't handle that. Little no, kid brain doesn't not. know what to do. Little kid brain is losing his mind. Also, with like when you get to Ecritique City in Gen Four, obviously you know it's it's known because you can go three different directions you want to go to. Yeah, yeah. It acts like kind of it acts kind of like a hub of sorts. Little kid brain can't handle that either because yeah. I didn't play RPGs back then. I was playing Crash and Spyro. Yeah, yeah. and Tekken, like very simple to the point situations. It tells you exactly where you need to go. There was no ambiguity. Like, oh, you can go there. Or you can go there. Or you can go up there. It's not even up there. I can't handle that. You need to tell me where to go. I can't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know which way is the right way <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, little kid brain was uh, losing his mind with Gen 2. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Gen 3 is pretty fun. I do like Gen I mean, here's the thing. So I, it could just because I'm getting older and I just don't have time. But I love and hate the nature's system. Yeah, yeah. 
because obviously you need to get the right nature, right? If you care any bit, you want the right nature for your Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. You can. Honestly, I would actually recommend people don't do that. Save yourself the, the headache. Don't. Just don't. <laughs> just just get Pokemon and be happy. But for people like me, maybe like you, it's just if I get a Pokemon with Timid, I'm like, mm-mm, I can't. I can't, I, I I can't not. do this. I can't do this. I need adamant. I need. I need mild. I need modest. <laughs> like I need. I need one of those. I can't. I can't do timid or quirky. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Or relaxed. Oh gosh, if I get relaxed, that's it. I can't do it. Um. So I have. Yeah. It's. It's terrible. Um. I wish I didn't care so much, but I do. Yeah. So it's. It's really annoying. But like, so that's why Gen One, Gen Two, is such a breath of fresh air. Like you don't got to worry about EVs. You don't got to worry about natures. It's all built in. Yeah, you know, they all have their own Pokemon, spreads. Catch Pokemon, be happy. Yeah. Okay, I can live with that. Um, but I still like Gen 3 a lot, though. It, it's, it's old enough to where like the nostalgia hits every time you play it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but after actually after Gen 3, for me, I dropped off Pokemon for a long time. I think I, I dropped off a of handhelds in general. Yeah. Um, I played Gen 3, beat the whole thing, um, and I just kind of just dropped off of it. I just didn't care anymore. Um. And then, because I was more, I was kind of getting into more console games. I was getting a little bit older, I guess. I was like, ah, I don't got time for handheld games <laughs> no more. I'm playing big boy consoles now. I'm playing the PS2. Um, and then years later, I came back. I was like, let me, let me you know what? I, I, ne- I never hated it. It just, I just, I just, you know, it just moved on. Yeah, I guess yeah. you can say. And, but I was like, you know what? Let me jump back on this. And I have, and I just never, never left. So I still don't play it as much as I, as I, as I could, but I still have them. And it was a good time. Um. Anyways, let's move on to the next question here. Um, okay, this is not really a question. This is more of getting your thoughts. So you said you're a game designer, which is really great for this question. With the mainline franchise, um, I mean, it's been game designer, no, go, no game designer. People have always been talking about, you know, the problems that Pokemon have had. Yeah. They keep, they don't, they don't fix them. They don't, they don't really do much to change them. I like to get your personal take on what are your, what are the things that kind of bug you the most? with like recurring problems that bug you the most um, with the mainline franchise with the mainline franchise like i there's a lot of things that they have fixed over the years which are fantastic um like they instead of it being type the type which affects your attack or special attack they made it move specific that's oh yes that was a fantastic yes. change because it made stuff like mm-hmm. flareon actually usable Okay. Because Flareon's may because all the evolutions have a specific stat spread, but it's always the same numbers. And Flareon's best stat is his attack, but it couldn't utilize it. Yeah, we know about that. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. now that once Gen Four <laughs> came around, they fixed that issue because it made it so you could learn Flare uh-huh. Blitz and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But there are things that have they have taken out or they've changed, and I don't like it. Or I, I feel like, oh yeah, they should put that back in. For instance, Versus Seeker. Oh, the first secret. That yes. was in Gen Four, and then they brought it kind of back in Gen Six because of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, well, it, was yeah in Gen, it was in Gen Three, wasn't it? Too wasn't it in Gen Three? It kind of. It was like it in was Fire the Red Leaf um, Green. I think it was Fire Red Leaf Green. I think they had. Yeah, Fire Red. It was in Fire yeah. Red Leaf Green. Um, in Gen Three, you had the Pokedab, and then it would like randomly show that someone was available to battle. Mm-hmm. So you could go back and battle them. But they made it very, very prominent in Gen 6 with Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. And then Gen 7 didn't have it, and Gen 8 doesn't have it. I did, um, like, rebattling battling gym leaders. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Emerald, Emerald first, first, I think, was the first to have it. I think maybe you might yeah, have it, it was, Ruby yeah. Sapphire once in a while, but Emerald had it, like, really well. And I really did, like, rebattling gym gym leaders. Um, yeah. It was super cool to see how they changed their teams, because they would always add you know J- jodo or kento pokemon to the mix and yeah i I like that i, I like that i like that as well it was like a big it was a really cool thing because it showed development of the all the trainers and the gym leaders and all they'll you'll go to like say you'll fight they did it in gen 2 as well with like the people would call you up saying oh i want a battle oh um, yeah they with the cell phone yeah but i yeah. didn't remember getting calls from gym leaders though it was always like just regular trainers no in heart gold and soul silver you could call up the gym leaders and you could rebattle them nice but you had to do it at specific times Oh, and then they'd okay. go to they'd go to the fighting dojo in mm-hmm. in Saffron City, and then you could battle them there like once a day. Okay. <clears throat> um, but the <laughs> the few things that obviously like that are big gripes. One one for me is the experience share pisses me off. 
I've heard about that. It, it, I, I don't know why. Like, in, in X and Y, they made it so that well, okay, they they basically made it so it's like, okay, well, if you want to pick it up, you can pick Pokemon up. If you haven't got the time to trade them all the Pokemon, fine. We're going to make it so that experience the experience you get, if you have it on, affects every Pokemon. Yes, I've heard about that one. Uh, which is fine. And in they kind of had it that way in Gen 1, but it was like, if you got 100 experience in Gen 1, it would divide the 100 experience between which the six Pokemon. Which I hated. Pokemon. I hated that. I honestly, yeah. it was so crap. I just got rid of it. I just got rid of the experience. Yeah, I, I hated like that. I didn't like it. And then all. in Gen 6, they made it so if your first Pokemon got 100 experience, I believe it affected it. It was the same as every other Pokemon. And then they changed it up so that if you, I think it, I think it was Gen 6 or it was Gen 5 or 6, where if you're a lower level than the Pokemon you find, you get more experience. If you're higher level, you get less experience, which is, again, makes sense. Oh, that, yeah, that, that's like a super RPG style type of idea. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Um, but in Let's Go, I don't, I don't like Let's Go for a start. Um, I should have said that. It's my worst one. But I, it's fine. You did. You did say that though. For um, in your uh, in your your ranking, yeah, that was that was bottom of the barrel for you. Um, let's go introduce experience share. You couldn't turn off because it was all about catching Pokemon. There was no. It was more focused on catching Pokemon than it was battling Pokemon. Um, but for some reason, they carried that on over into Sword and Shield, and you get. You, when you have Pokemon on your team, you get the experience share. You can't turn it off, hmm. and I don't like that. I can't turn it off because I want to trade up my Pokemon individually hmm. and feel like a sense of achievement of trading them up, especially in the main game. I like post game. I'll turn it on and I'll do it to catch all the Pokemon, get them all evolved. That's fine, but I don't like the fact that I can't turn it off. It really, really bothers me. That is very strange. That kind of goes against. I mean, yeah, because they're not. I was gonna say it goes against like a lot of RPG ideas, but I was thinking, yeah, because like they're not in the battle with you, so they shouldn't be no. getting. Like if they were all around you, then yeah, they all get the experience, but they're in their balls; they're not doing anything. So yeah, interesting. And uh, and much later, I follow this person on Twitter, and he puts up like these Pokemon facts and stuff, mm-hmm. and he he'll sometimes share information from interviews, and I can't remember who said it, but it was one of the directors of Sword and Shield. And this really, like, after I learned this, I was so, I was, I was very angry. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, Drew's getting mad. <laughs> as a, as a, especially as a designer. Because the whole thing with Pokemon is you catch Pokemon and you make a team of Pokemon. Mm-hmm. For me, I will always catch the newer Pokemon in that region, unless it's a new form or it evolves from an old, or something evolves from an old Pokemon. And then I'll use that. So basically, use it every every way to do that. And I'll I will build a team of six, and I'll use that team of six. That'll be my team. But most people they'll they'll chop and change it. But the whole idea is that you have the team with you, sort of thing, like a typical RPG. Um, their reasoning for it not being off was because of time constraints of like people don't have the time to trade it up. And they said, if you want to train up your team, then just take the Pokemon off your team that was their reasoning for it and it's like well no i don't <laughs> want to take the pokemon off my team so instead of maybe taking off the item off your bag they uh-huh. wanted to take manually keep removing pokemon yeah. in and out of your team <laughs> i said if you don't want to trade up all your pokemon at once then just put them in the box and i was like no <laughs> oh gosh okay i'm not gonna okay i personally don't I'm not as mad about the experience training being on all the time as you are, but I will say that that reasoning, though, yeah, that explanation is oh gosh, that is <laughs> that's like on the line of where they were like, remember the Xbox issue, Xbox One problems when that yeah. launched, and they were like, oh well, what about people who don't have internet connection? Oh, we have we have an option for that. It's called the Xbox 360. Oh yeah, I remember like, that. So <laughs> this is just kind of the same thing. Like, oh, what if people don't want to turn the experience share? Oh, we have something that yes, put your Pokemon into the, into the box. Well, yeah. what if you want to use them though? Well, put them back in the box. But what if you don't want them to get the experience, like you know, the easy way? Well, put them back. What do you want yeah. me to do, Pokemon? Like I can't just take like, them out. I can't pull them from the PC mid battle like that. No. <laughs> that is funny. It's just, it's just like the, and it was like a really serious interview as well. And it was just like, well, why would you? Why? Why? Why would you do that? Oh man, uh, he probably he probably had to think of something on the fly. That was the best yeah. thing he could come up with. 
It's like, well, just put the experience share in the bag and let me turn it off. Simple. Yeah. Why, why is that an issue? You couldn't, you couldn't code that in. <laughs> like, why, why take that out? Oh, gosh. It might you already had it programmed. That. It might have something to do with, you know, maybe Pokemon. I mean, I mean, it's highly documented. The Pokemon just refuses to acknowledge its true player base, mm -hmm. which is, you know, 20 to 30 year olds <laughs> instead yeah. of children. Um, so I think that's probably why. They're just catering to what they still are trying to go with. I mean, I guess I get it. Like, if you keep catering to kids, then those kids turn into lifelong customers. I get yeah. it. If, you, if they just focused on us, there will be a time where we won't be playing it anymore. So I get it. But still, you know, it's like, at least, like, like acknowledge the fact that a good chunk of your fan base are adults. Yeah. And they don't, they, they don't need you to hand feed them experience no. at all times unless they want it and they have the agency to understand to you know to turn it off on or on when yeah. they want so oh yeah that's an interesting thing well i mean what else what what other things bother you that, that uh, have been like re repeating issues for you uh, this has been an issue since gen 7 like okay. i don't like a lot of people are like oh bring back the national decks and stuff and I want them to bring it back, but I don't oh, care. Dexit. Yeah, Dexit, <laughs> yeah. Dex it, yeah. yeah. Dex I, but I was one okay. of those people who was like, I don't care. Like, I play in this game for to experience Gala. I want to experience Gala. I don't, I'm not really that bothered about the national decks. If they bring it back, they bring it back. If they don't, I'd, it'd be annoying, but I, I'll get over it. So it was never a big issue for me, but I don't like the fact that they keep, they keep, Doing stuff like in, in Gen Seven, they had the the Alola decks, and they had mm -hmm. each island had its own Pokedex, which is really cool. Okay. Uh, there was no national decks, so you could import oh. Pokemon into the game, but they mm -hmm. wouldn't have Pokedexes. Um, what? Yeah, and it's the same with Galar. If there's a Pokemon that's not in the Galar decks in any of the like the Galar decks, the Isle of Armor decks, or the Crown Tundra decks, it won't have a Pokedex entry. So you catch but it, and you don't get anything on it. But it could be in the game. So yeah. it won't break the game, but the Pokedex won't recognize it. Yeah. That's really weird. So, um, and uh, again, I, I am a, a, one of those people that loves my lore, and I love learning about the Pokemon and seeing how it interacts and like how each game is different and how it describes the Pokemon and stuff. And I, I love completing the Pokedex. And... That's just an issue for me, because it started in Gen 7. It didn't even start in Gen 8, which is a lot when a lot of people went, they were like, oh, we're not putting all the Pokemon in it, which is fine, because there's nearly a thousand Pokemon. And, yeah, it's a lot. And okay, a lot of the Pokemon have a thousand now. Of, I thought uh, they were a thousand. No. No? We're Nine thousand? Yeah, okay. At 800 okay. and something. Oh, I thought we were in the 900s, at least. Uh, Oh, okay. I guess we're less than we thought. Less than I thought. I oh. think I can't remember exactly the number, but I think it's a like eight hundred and like eighty something. Okay. Still a lot, but yeah. Yeah, still a lot, and then a lot of those Pokemon have alternate forms as well. Mm -hmm. So, and I can understand why they chose not to include them all, and then eventually they've been adding them back in. They've been doing all these things, and then they've got obviously got Pokemon Home, which has its own national X and stuff. Um. I just wanted it in the main game, but I'm not like like I said. I'm, I wasn't bothered when in in X and uh, in Sword and Shield they were like, "Oh, we're not including every Pokemon." That didn't really bother me because I'm because hmm. it's not that hard to reprogram them in. Yeah, um, I think might have been issue might have been just because of how they messaged the messaging with it. Yeah, because I mean it's on a console now. It's a full. It's on a full you know, full full blown console. First time. Yeah, the, I mean the the computer powder of the Switch is probably greater than the 3DS will yeah. ever be, right? So I think, I mean, if they had just been like, you know, we're gonna have this much at launch, we'll try to add in as we go. Yeah, that would have been a little, a little bit better. You still people upset, like, oh, why? I still want my national decks from the start, blah blah blah. But that would have at least been a little bit easier to swallow, because because people who do want it, they'd be like, okay, maybe not now. But later, because yeah. I mean, especially especially if they catch wrestling, like guys, there's almost nine hundred fucking Pokemon <laughs> now. 
leave us alone. Give us a break. Yeah. Like, there's so many Pokemon. Like, to individually update older sprites and with older move animations yeah. and then you know, all of that stuff for so many Pokemon. Like, it's just, you got to give them time. So I, if they had, I mean, because, like, I thought, like, I was, I wasn't necessarily bothered per se because I don't have a Switch, but I was still a little like, huh, okay, so that's a first. Because yeah. I didn't, well, I didn't know about the Lola thing. I didn't know how they separated that. It's how there's technically no national deck, but there kind of is, but not yeah. technically. But I didn't know about that, so I was thinking like, oh, it's a kind of first thing. Interesting. Um, I would probably be a little, little irked if I did have a Switch because I do like to have all of them. Yeah, of course. Um, but um. I was thinking like, well, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon, way a lot, and I gotta give them, you know, give them some time. Like, I gotta like back off. Like, I gotta think of like them, like from their point of view. Like, okay, yeah, like that's that's crazy to do all that for this brand new game, right? And to do it right and to do it well. Yeah. You know? I was like, so I was thinking, well, you know what? They can just add them in. They can just add them in later. There's yeah. nothing stopping them from adding them in later in some other way. Maybe they'll just make it to where they just go onto the wild certain areas. Like that just adds into like the, the um, chance rate of what you might find. Yeah. Maybe they'll put into that to that giant that giant area that's in Galar or Gallo. Yeah, the wild um, area. Yeah. The wild area. They'll maybe they'll put most of them there, right? Maybe they'll make some of them events or something. I don't know. There's so many things they could do. Maybe make a whole like oh well, I guess they did already with the Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor. But maybe like make like little tiny like with patches. Maybe like some little like kind of like the Sevi Islands. Like it's a new area, but like yeah. a, in a it, like in a, a bite size way. Maybe they can do that with a patch or an update. Like maybe like a little little tiny little area, extra little extra area, and have a bunch of Pokemon be there. That you know, new Pokemon be there. Like there's yeah. a lot of things they can do since this is on a console, a proper console. So I think eventually we'll get all of them. I think I think we will over time. Whether that's through big expansions or just updates, patches. Yeah. I think I we think will get them all. Once um, BDSP come out, they will patch what is it that? so that you B- B- uh, brilliant, brilliant diamond shining pearl. Oh, the new ones. Oh, the remakes. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. They will patch it so that there's so Pokemon in it. Because, for instance, in the Crown Tundra, they made it so that you can catch fossil Pokemon from other oh. regions. Oh, they're just like they're just casually running around. Just casually running around. Like they're not prehistoric fossils. Okay. There, there's a reason for that. I'll get that's another law <laughs> okay. drop in a minute. Um, okay, okay. This is just my theory though, but it makes a lot of sense. Um But the only two that aren't weren't in it were Shield On and Kranidos. Neither of those were in it. Oh, for Gen they 4. The, okay. Yeah, those are the Gen 4 fossils. And I was like, okay, well there's gotta be a Gen 4 remake coming then. <laughs> oh, so you so, kinda called it before before yeah. they announced it. Okay. Interesting. Um, um that makes sense. But in the south coast of England, there is a place called the Jurassic Coast, where oh. there is a bunch of like old fossils and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and because the Crown Tundra is a very old feeling area, and mm-hmm. it feels like it, it, it's hard to explain it, but it's because of that area and where it is based on what is based on England. Mm-hmm. Um, the Crown Tundra is in the south. Okay. And where the uh, uh, the Jurassic Coast would be. Okay. So it makes so sense makes why sense. they're there, but it would have been cool if they were just actual fossils rather than... Yeah, like find them somewhere, you know? Like yeah. In the, like in the world, not the... So I don't know if you've seen the fossil Pokemon from Gen, 4, uh, Gen 8. No, I mean, I didn't know they even had them in Gen 8. <laughs> they do. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm so they're, behind, bro. Like, I'm so behind. <laughs> they're based on... Um, uh, there, there was a big thing during, like the Victorian era and stuff, where archaeologists would go off and they would find dinosaur bones and they would put them together and they would be completely wrong. <laughs> and okay. that is still, like, how they are today. So that is the Gallo fossils. That is how the Gallo fossils wow. are. You get That's two a... halves of fossils <laughs> and you get these weird mismatch Pokemon. That's but I love cut. them. <laughs> That is a deep cut. Damn, Pokemon went way back in history to figure that out. Yeah, so that you get funny. like, um, like a, a a bird fossil and a fish fossil, and then I can't remember what the other two are. Um, there's four types of fossils, but you can there's four new fossil Pokemon, and they're basically fusions of those two fossils. 
just mismatches. Yeah. The other, the other. So they like really it, weird. That's really, that's really funny. Yeah. But I can imagine if I was actually in Britain, if I lived in Britain, I knew about that. I would have like really appreciated that. I was like, holy crap, they know. Yeah. <laughs> they that's know. what I really liked about it. A lot of people don't like, at first, a lot of people didn't like them because they didn't understand them. But then once that came uh-huh. about, it was really interesting. Dang. Yeah. I'm, that's really funny. Um, all right, cool. Well, um, for the sake of time, we're going to wrap this up here. Um, we're going over an hour here, but I would want to ask, you know, spin real fast. Top three Pokemon. Top three Pokemon. Any, um, any order, any order, any order. Doesn't matter the order. Uh, Gengar. Okay. As you can see, it's right there. Yeah, you guys can see. It's just yeah. right. Maybe Togepi is underneath or is right after that. <laughs> like, given Rowlet. how big that Togepi is. Ah, Rowlet. All right. Rowlet and Mudkip. Mudkip. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. Mudkip is a little adorable little derpy yeah. thing, isn't he? <laughs> and, ah. <laughs> Mudkip reminds me of Wooper. Top somewhere. Oh, I see around. him. I see him. He's right next yeah. to Rowlet. Yeah. Um, Mudkip reminds me of Wooper sometimes. Yeah. And just how derpy how derpy it looks. Um Wooper Wooper is the fucking best. Have you seen Wooper memes? Wooper memes are yes. so funny. Um oh gosh. Look up Wooper memes, guys. It's so, <laughs> so he's the he's the best. Um you know, I've never really considered myself like like people always ask, you know, what's your Pokemon RJ? Like I have I never really cared enough to think about it. Yeah. But I do have two that I'm for some reason or another really fond of. And that's like I mentioned before, Mary Ben Hondauer. I love. I don't know why. Hondo. I don't know why. For some reason, it might be because I always had silver, and then I had crystal, and you can't get either of those in in um in those games. They're only you in can gold. get them in silver. No, in gold, gold. You can get them. No, in gold. I I had silver. I had Mareep and Houndour. I always had Mareep and Houndour on my team. You can't get Mareep and Crystal. Oh, we're. I need to find this out now. <laughs> we're doing this live. I'm figuring this out. Um. It was like okay. Skarmory, Mantine, Gold. Um, Teddy is a uh, fan Pokemon, gold, silver, uh, uh, exclusives. There we go. Exclusives. We'll figure this. Let's figure this out. Because, you know, it could also be that too. Because I did have crystal more than I had silver. Yeah. Houndour um, was in crystal, but Houndour is only available in Kanto, which made it hard to get. Okay, let's see here. The heck? Oh, these are Kanto Pokemon only. No, 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 it's not. What the heck? This is weird. I'm on Serebii, but it's not showing me either for either version. It's really <laughs> weird. Because it, 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 it brought up the Skarmory and the Teddy Ursa. Yeah. Like you mentioned. But it doesn't have Mareep. It doesn't have Mary or Tondauer on this list. Yeah, because yeah, they're, they're not version exclusive in gold and silver. What? It was just crystal. In crystal, you couldn't get Marie, but in, in silver, because I had silver for a really long time and then I got gold, but I, I always had Marie and Houndour on my team. What? <clears throat> what? Okay, here we go. Let's see here. I'm on IGN now. Pokemon Crystal, let's see here. Same Pokemon, obtainable Pokemon Silver, and Gold, also Casual, Pokemon Crystal, except, okay, there's Mareep. Okay, so Mary checks out. You can't get Mareep like you could. You can't get Remoraid. Uh, yeah, Remoraid's on there too. Um, Is that Girafferig for some reason? I don't think you get Girafferig in Crystal. Uh, maybe. maybe. Let's see here. I'm on another list. I'm on a full list here. We're on a full picture list of the exclusives. And, okay. Huh. You know what? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm just blinded by crystal. <laughs> and I'm just thinking about crystal, not so much silver. Well, in any case, I didn't have them on my team, and I wanted them because yeah. I love them, and I don't know why I love them. But um, I would put those two as tops for me. Um, and then, honestly, as a last one, I I never really... I don't know. Maybe Kingdra? Kingdra's I like Kingdra's. I like the idea of Kingdra. Yeah, right? I like the water dragon, especially it's, it's the first one. I liked. I like this look a lot. I do wish its stats were a bit better. It's like more of a well-rounded stat base, stat, yeah. stat spread, but it's never really that great at anything. But it's uh, like just super. Like you don't see it very often, right? In the games, like no one really has it. No. When you fight people, so when you see one, you're like, oh, 
this really like you forget how cool it looks. You forget that it even exists. Kindred become more amazing. I think it's from Gen Four or Five onwards. I heard it got better because he gets the sniper ability. Okay, yeah, I forget why, but yeah, okay, cool sniper ability. I'll keep that in mind because I might I might use it again. But um, I used it in Gen. I actually had a dragon. Wait, was it a dragon team? I think I had a dragon team in Gen 3. One of yeah. the Gen 3 runs, I was like doing a dragon run. I had Kingdra, and I was really happy. Oh, maybe Kingdra slash Flygon. The Flygon's I, really good. Cool. I, I like Flygon. I, like, I love Flygon. I know a stat spread is not the best, but I, I do really like Flygon. It was really good for Gen 3. Its yeah. stats were good for Gen 3. And I do love the fact that it was a ground dragon. Like, that was also a new one. Yeah. Um... I mean, the fact that it can avoid earthquake, but then give earthquake, it, like, is really funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it might be those maybe a, a split between Kingdra and Flygon, um, and then maybe even on there. But anyways, guys, um, thanks for joining us. And I'm sorry this one this went a little long, but hey, we have a special guest this time, and I want to pick his brain about Pokemon and stuff. Um, but yeah, guys, um, again, thank you, Drew, or the Drew, <laughs> the Drew Gamer, for stopping by. And being a special guest for the podcast was really great to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, we'll probably have him again. If like if, if any Pokemon hot Pokemon juicy news hits hits the scene, we might have to pull him back in and get his thoughts. <laughs> uh, he might know some extra details we don't know about, like why something something's going on in Pokemon world. Um, but with that, guys, um, hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. We will see you guys on the next week. Don't forget to, to like, comment, and subscribe um, if you want to see more of this. Uh, I put a link for his channel, the Drew Gamers channel, down below, so you can check him out. He usually does. Well, lately, he's been doing a lot of Let's Play style stuff. Um, yeah. Ocarina of Time is his main thing. Is I keep. I think there's another. Cha- there's something else you're doing too, isn't there? Um, besides besides uh, Kenna, I think. But uh, Kenna was just a review. Okay. Is so? Are you just? So having, is it just? It is Ocarina of Time for the moment. Yeah. Until Ocarina's okay. finished. Okay. So he's just doing Ocarina of Time. Close to finishing. Ocarina of Time. Uh, Let's play. Um, right now, currently. Um, he's having a good time with that. Every once in a while, he does a little something fun. He did a he did a tier list with his buddy Dan on Pokemon games, all the mainline Pokemon games, which was a lot of fun to review. He has some hot takes, in my opinion, <laughs> um, on a couple of those. But um, it was still good times. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.